Hello again, everyone. Today in the studio, I have the new 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm really excited to check this out because I've been waiting for the day that there's an 8 gig version of the Pi. And now that's a reality because here it is. I've always felt like the 4 gig restriction was just too low for me for some use cases. And now that the 8 gig version of the Raspberry Pi has been officially released, I feel like it actually opens the door for a lot more possibilities on this board. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys my first impressions of the new Raspberry Pi OS, formerly known as Raspbian, and we'll get a feel for the performance. I can't wait, so stay tuned and we'll dive right in. So I am really itching to get this thing out of the box. So I figured I would go ahead and do a quick unboxing. I know it's nothing too exciting, it's just one Raspberry Pi, it's just one box, but there's nothing like the feeling of taking something new and fresh out of the box for the very first time. So let's go ahead and unbox the Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM. Alright, so here it is. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box, but first I'll go ahead and show you guys the actual box it comes in. So it's in an all red box, and you can clearly see that it's a Raspberry Pi 4 computer, so you don't mistake it for a microwave or something like that. And as it says in the box, it has eight gigs of RAM. We turn it over, it just tells us to open here, in case we were wondering where we should start off at. And then, of course, we do have some information here on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and get it open, so I'll just go ahead and open this flap. And here it is, look at that. And of course, here is the new Raspberry Pi itself. Let me go ahead and orientate that right. And there we have it. How exciting is that? So the new Raspberry Pi with eight gigs of RAM is in my hands right now. It's really awesome and you know, it's exactly to be expected. It's a Raspberry Pi board. And if you've seen them before, you know pretty much what to expect. And also in the box, we have some stuff. I'm not gonna read all this, but basically gives us some warnings here. Pretty self-explanatory. Of course, we do get this little booklet, safety and user guide. Again, if you've ever purchased a Raspberry Pi in the past, you know exactly what to expect. It's pretty much the same thing again. But now that we have it unboxed, let's go ahead and take it for a spin. So I was really excited to try out the new 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So I grabbed an old monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, a bunch of cables. I made my desk look like a complete mess, but it gets the job done. And then I was ready to go to check this out. So here we are at the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. It automatically logged me in. It didn't even ask me for a password, but before I could get started, there was a few things that I needed to tweak. First of all, I noticed that there were black bars all across the screen. And what I had to do was go into a terminal and disable overscan. And I'm not really sure why they don't default to fix that because it seems like a very common problem, but thankfully it's very easy to fix. And with that out of the way, Let's go ahead and check this out. So welcome to Raspberry Pi. I'll click next. And it's asking me some details about my locale here. So I'm going to customize this for my area. I'll use US keyboard and English language. Asking me for a password, so I'll go ahead and set that. And right here, it's actually showing me that there's a fix for the black border around the desktop that I just mentioned. 
So I could have just clicked this, but I guess I went ahead and fixed it the old fashioned way, but it doesn't show that border anymore, so I'm not going to worry about that. And of course, I've already connected to Wi-Fi, so I'm going to skip that. And yep, I'll go ahead and update software, so I'll click Next. So now it's telling me that, that the system is up to date and the setup is complete. Now I'm going to actually shut this down rather than restart. Because the first thing I want to do is get a feel for the boot speed. So what I'm going to do is completely shut it down right now. And then wait for the power to go off. So here's what I'm going to do. Now the screen recorder is not going to show the entire boot splash. I have two monitors plugged in in a mirrored state. It's only going to show the initial boot screen on my main monitor, the one that's not being recorded from. So what I'm going to do is plug it in, and then I will not edit this part of the video, and you will see in real time how long it takes to boot Raspberry Pi OS on the new Pi 4 with 8 gigs. 3, 2, 1, and connect it. And there we go, the desktop is loaded, and it's in the process of connecting to Wi-Fi. Now, it goes without saying, though, that the speed of boot is going to be highly dependent on which SD card you went ahead and used for your installation. Obviously, the faster the better, but I still think even with my mediocre SD card, that was pretty fast. So at this point, we've checked out the boot speed, you've seen the welcome screen, and again, here we are at the default desktop. Now the first thing I think we should do is go ahead and check out the overall system performance from an idle state because I don't have any apps open right now. So what I'll do is go ahead and open up the task manager right here. You can see we have eight gigs of RAM or roughly the same. There's going to be some that is reserved. CPU usage is 0%. And I know it has to be using um, a little bit more than that because, you know, I am running two displays off of this, even though they are in a mirrored state. That's going to put a little bit of stress on the processor, but despite having two displays connected, I think it's handling it pretty well. So we can see right now we have about 160-ish megabytes of RAM used, which is extremely low, even when you look at lower usage desktops like Ubuntu Mate. It's still going to use a little bit more than that, at least on x86. So 165 megabytes of RAM, well, that's actually pretty good. Now it's giving us the overall of 0% here of the CPU. There's obviously more than one core. Now more details isn't actually going to show me, but if I open up a terminal, let's see if we have HTOP. And we do, awesome. So that's pretty cool. It comes with HTOP by default, which is something that I go ahead and install anyway. So if I open that up, now we can get a little bit better of a look here. So I'm gonna increase the font size a bit just to make sure all of my viewers on mobile devices are able to see this. But we can see the four individual cores right here and also the memory usage. I like HTOP quite a bit. It's my go-to when I wanna find out where my resource usage is actually going. It just makes it very easy to find that out and it runs in a terminal so you don't even need X. Now interesting here, it's reporting about 245 megabytes here. And that's a bit different than what we saw here in the task manager, which is actually showing less. So this is going to be megabytes of RAM, and this could be mebibytes, which are a different form of measurement. I'm not going to get into that. But basically, you can see that the memory usage by default is actually fairly low. Now let's go ahead and check out the rest of the desktop. Now one thing to note is that the reason why I'm calling this a first impressions video for the Raspbian section, I keep saying Raspbian, Raspberry Pi OS is the new name. 
I haven't really used Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS as anything other than basically a server with no GUI or anything like that at all, just basically running my Pis as little mini servers. So this is actually the first time that I've logged into a Raspberry Pi desktop in years. But already I feel like it does seem fairly performant. We're going to check that more in just a moment. I think the user experience is actually pretty cool too. So let's go ahead and open up a web browser here. And we have Chromium as the default browser. And I think that's an interesting thing to note because, you know, before the maximum we had was four gigs of RAM. And I think that I would struggle with as many tabs as I open in four gigs of RAM. Eight gigs is probably a lot more of a realistic scenario here. With eight gigs of RAM, I feel like if I'm browsing, I'm going to have a much better experience. So let's go ahead and open up a website. Then here we have my website, just a random example. And let's go ahead and open up a few more. I can click here for the YouTube channel. So I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see how fast that loads. It tells a little bit slower than I would like, but you know, it is a Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and click the back button before the intro starts playing. But you get the idea. I think it's fairly usable. And of course, there's going to be factors such as your Wi-Fi speed, if there's any interference. And, you know, when it comes to loading the web browser initially, it's going to be your SD card. But I do think that this is something that I can use. And it's interesting here that it comes with uBlock Origin by default, which is kind of neat because this is something that I would install anyway. So I'm actually happy to see that because it is going to make the browsing experience that much better. And you might be wondering, why would Raspberry Pi OS ship uBlock, which is going to potentially limit ad revenue for anyone that browses websites. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal, honestly, but when it comes to ads, it's going to slow down the browsing experience and the CPU on the Raspberry Pi, as good as it is, is not going to be quite up to x86 speeds. So I think that it's a good idea to include something like this because it's going to limit the number of connections and the number of things that are being downloaded. So if I was to go to, let's just say, speedtest.net, may or may not be the best, but we'll just go ahead and go with it. All right, so it looks like it's ready. Let's just see what the speed is like on Wi-Fi, which of course is going to be slower than wired, but let's just see what happens. So I think this is actually fairly decent. Most of my devices are probably going to hit at least 100 or 150 on Wi-Fi, but I don't think there's anything wrong with an average of 58 megabits per second. That's actually really good and probably a lot faster than the entirety of a lot of my viewers' internet connections anyway. So I think that's pretty cool. And when it comes to upload, that's certainly pretty acceptable as well. I think that this is actually um, great. This is awesome. And of course, you know, there's some other applications here. It's not just about web browsing, although that is a pretty good highlight because, you know, we have 8 gigs of RAM now. But if we look at the installed applications here, we have some programming apps by default. So we have Genie. And this is actually my favorite text editor or my favorite GUI text editor when it comes to writing code. I've actually been using this for quite some time. I'm happy to see it included here. That's actually pretty cool. I have a Python IDE. I haven't heard of Thani before. That's interesting. So this is pretty cool. So when it comes to programming Python, we definitely are covered here. And if you at all are interested in programming Python, definitely check out my Python series on this channel. I have a playlist dedicated to it. If you want to go ahead and learn the basics of Python programming, and maybe you can go ahead and write some programs on your Pi 4 with 8 gigs. How cool would that be? What else do we have here? So I've gone over internet. We have Chromium, VLC for our video. 
we want to play video files, then this is what we will use for that by default. And it seems like it's taken a minute to load here, so you're going to notice a little bit of a delay compared to x86. But then again, I am using a mediocre SD card. I probably should have went with a faster one, but, you know, I thought it would be fine. Now, interestingly enough, it never really appeared, did it? And again, this is beta, so the speed might improve and there might be some rough edges here. So if I go to the task manager, do we have VLC on the list? And it doesn't appear to have ran, so just like any other Linux user, I'm going to open up a terminal here, type VLC, and just see what happens. Maybe it'll give us an error. And it works just fine. Well, actually, not just fine. I, I can't really see anything in the window here. I'm not sure what's actually going on here. But I'm going to get out of that. Again, this is beta, so I'm not going to pass any final judgment on Raspberry Pi OS. So graphics, we have an image viewer here. No surprise there. Don't have any photos to show off right now. And accessories, you know, we have an archive viewer, file manager, PDF viewer. We actually have a diagnostic screen right here, which is pretty cool. We can do an SD card speed test. So maybe I can find out just how slow and horrible my SD card is. Let's see. And of course, it completely failed. Let's go ahead and look at the log, though, and kind of see what is the problem here. So we can see that it's failing the write speed here. The read speed is actually passing. And it is passing tests here. So there's something wrong with the SD card. But, you know, the read speed does appear to be up to the task. And even with the fact that this is a fairly mediocre SD card, I think it actually runs fairly well. And it's only going to run better if I actually use a better SD card. So I think that's actually pretty cool. And this is a cool test right here that can actually basically tell me whether or not my SD card is good enough for the Raspberry Pi. And this is definitely something you can use if you're having trouble or point someone to if they're having trouble that I think is a great thing for them to include. So overall, I think that the Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM is awesome. It's great to finally have 8 gigs of RAM on a Raspberry Pi. And who knows, maybe someday I'll be coming at you guys with a video of the 16 gig version if they ever do one. But 8 gigs is actually great and opens more doors. And Raspberry Pi OS, even though I haven't spent much time with it yet, I've only had an issue with VLC, and again, this is beta, but I think that it is fairly solid for the first beta that they've released. And it's actually exciting to me to see what they come out with and what the final version will look like. But so far, so good, guys. I'm really liking this. So there you go. That was my quick look at the new Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM and also my first impressions of the new Raspberry Pi OS. What did you guys think? As for me, I'm just really excited. The day has finally come where we have an 8 gig version of the Pi. It opens more doors and it even allows you to use it as a desktop with fewer compromises. There's definitely a lot to be excited about here. If you have one of these, what are you using yours for? Let me know. Or if you have any opinions at all, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.